no one cares about Final Fantasy 14. Thank you so much, because that was, I read this in chat, that is exactly, like, sometimes I'll read, uh, I'll read comments, and it will just be, like, some random fucking comment. It's like somebody, for some reason, just, like, had to get it out there, and I'm not sure what it is, and it's not just the people that hate Final Fantasy, it's also the people that hate WoW. Like, I read these every single day, right? So I, I get to see them all the time. It's really crazy for me to see how many people are, like, emotionally upset at the fact that Final Fantasy is, uh, you know, it, it is a game. And uh, same with World of Warcraft. I mean, WoW is also not the same thing. So listen, what I want to say here, right, is a lot of people have been uh, opinionated, and this is what I've said before, right, is that people are very opinionated about their MMO because they don't want to feel like they wasted their time on the wrong game. It's like imagine looking back on the last eight years of your life and realizing that, oh my god, I played a wrong game. I played a bad game. Like, who the fuck wants to come to that fucking realization? Who wants to come to wake up in the morning, come to the realization that, oh my god, I actually spent the last better part of a decade playing a fucking game that sucks and that I hate? Like, who wants to have that happen? That's so sad. That's like the worst thing that could possibly happen to you. So yes, obviously, right now, all right, this is the funniest thing that we're actually going to look at these. There's people in chat that are like, wow, these Final Fantasy Andes sure are getting owned. And there's other people like, wow, dude, these WoW Andes sure are getting owned. <laughs> wow, they're so stupid. I knew that we were the right ones. Yeah, yeah, we sure were. <laughs> he likes our game more, right? <laughs> Okay, let's fucking move on, all right? Uh, with Final Fantasy XIV's game design, I never want to make it, so you have to play Final Fantasy XIV continuously, log in every day. Speaking of that, yeah, <laughs> I, I want to avoid forcing people to play because everyone's so busy. And I don't think everyone could log in every day and put in the time to play. And I, 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 this is kind of in the way. I think it's okay for people to come back. There's a major update, play through it once, play the content, and then eventually wean out or slow down and play other video games or spend some quality time with your family. Imagine that. I think moving forwards, MMOs have to be like that or it won't stand a chance. Well, I think that, uh, you know, I think that I've looked at this one before and it's very fucking true because the fact is that you have a lot of these MMOs that have these retention mechanics. I think that New World is probably the worst one because like with with Final Fantasy, like Final Fantasy has like some retention mechanics, right? I mean, you want you, you have like a weekly lockout. Uh, you have certain things you can only farm however many times a day, like Beast Trap dailies. Like Final Fantasy has dailies too. So really, it's not about the dailies themselves. It's about how the systems make up for the time that you don't spend doing them. So uh, Final Fantasy has dailies. WoW has dailies. Lost Ark has dailies. And for some reason, New World has dailies. Did you guys know this? There are things you can only do once a day in New World. Like the game that you paid for once? Like I can understand Final Fantasy wanting to do it or WoW wanting to do it because they've got a sub. And, and like it's the same with, uh, you know, games like a Lost Ark, right? They've got the Crystalline Aura. you got to keep them stringing along so you can make some money off of these fuckers, right? But with this, New World, like why can we only make one Gypsum cast a day? Why can't we just keep farming them and be done? You know what I mean? It's crazy. It's the crystalline aura. Yeah, time gating for fun. I think that there is a certain degree, and I will be honest, okay? I think that Kevin Jordan was right whenever he talked about this. There is a certain degree of pacing for players that is actually healthy for the player base. Because how many times have they added a system into the game that is most efficient if you farm it 16 hours a day and you have it's like in world of warcraft you had that with like the benthic armor in patch 8.2 etc and there were a few other ones also like the artifact weapon and these are not healthy systems i think that the goal with systems and if a system ever pushes a player to feel like they have to play 12 or 16 hours a day to remain competitive maybe there's a problem with your system you know what i mean like, this is what I said before with a lot of these other games, is that if you have an empty room, the empty room is the game, you've got a fork, and that's the only thing in the room, and there's an electrical outlet on the wall, is it really, is it really the person's fault if they put the fork into the electrical outlet? That's the only thing you gave them to do. You've led them to that direction, you know what I mean? Like, this is the, if, if the, the apex of min-maxing is to play a game in a way that makes it unfun, 
then it's the developer's fault. That's the truth. It is the developer's fault. And this is the exact thing that I said before about this mount drop. I'm actually surprised I still have it up there. But uh, it's the same thing about this mount. This farming the love rocket in WoW is not fun. Like, I don't give a fuck about, oh, well, it's really hard. And the people that earned it should have it. Who gives a fuck? Like, if it's not fun, then that's all there is to it. People should take more responsibility, though? No, absolutely not. You can never rely on people to take responsibility. Do you know how I know that? Because I go to Walmart. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Like, you can you can expect, Oh, well, you know, they're going to take a little bit of accountability for themselves. They're going to really stand up and just fucking pull themselves up and really you know, make the right decisions and stop being stupid. And you're not wrong. You're not wrong. That is what they should do, but it's not what they will do. That will not happen because the moment that you can do something and it's okay, people will do it. And that's why there are laws against a lot of these things. And there are also a bunch of extra things that, uh, you know, kind of prevent people from doing things that are unhealthy for themselves in these games. And that's what's most important, right? You sound like every American. Well, no one's holding them accountable. Well, it's but like who do you like what do you want accountability for in a game right it's just a game but like people are gonna play it that way because they can it's kind of like world buffs in classic wow in my opinion world buffs in classic wow were fun to do but getting all the buffs every single week was not fun it just wasn't it was a it was bad game design and because it gave you a massive advantage everybody would take advantage of it everybody would do it even though they didn't necessarily want to and that's the craziest fucking thing about it, is the social pressures that these min-maxing systems put on the player base indirectly. So, like, for example, if you're in a guild, how many of you guys have ever been in a guild and your guild master was like, Okay, guys, well, uh, with the new patch, we're going to have a vendor, and uh, the vendor is going to have a reputation item at Revered. And if you farm out uh, elite mobs and you do all of the rares and you do the pet battles every single day, every single person can have that item by the time that Mythic comes out. So if you want a spot in the Mythic raid, if you want to be in there, you've got to farm out that item. You've got to get over those pet battles. You've got to get to work. And have you guys ever had that happen? It, that, where there's like some stupid fucking expectation or this is also what happens is if you have you ever been in a guild where it's like you're a uh like let's say you're a mage and then the other guy in the guild is a mage too except for the other guy in the guild min maxes the fuck out of his character he plays 16 hours a day and he has more gear than you because he does it or is bet he's he has like a structural advantage he's not just better as a player mechanically but he has like better gear in one way or another because he engages in systems that are really really big right like a uh, artifact power uh in legion uh, as right power in bfa and he just does more damage than you and what happens you're outside the instance in group six and he's inside the instance getting more gear and then guess what happens after that well because he has more gear well then he's gonna stay in the instance because he has more gear and that's what they did they gave him the gear so they can do the next boss and so then you're sitting out there and nothing's happening and this is the way that a lot of these developers don't seem to really understand how social pressures occur in their games they have no idea they, they don't understand it you know how you know why they don't understand it it's because uh it's because they're really good at making video games they're really good at like programming they're really good at like thinking of systems etc but they don't th they don't they don't they can't understand how people are going to think you know like listen to ian talk about world of warcraft do you think ian really understands the way that an average player feels whenever they play his game do, do you think that, that that's what it would be do you, do you think he understands? Like, he can relate to them? He can be like, man, I understand how this happened. I, yeah, dude, this really sucks. Absolutely. He, he ain't got no idea. He ain't got no idea, but he's really good at making rates, right? This is why I, I literally said the same shit yesterday, right? He's really good at making rates. And what I'm saying is that you need to have people in there, people like Kevin Jordan, people that understand fundamentally the way that people's brain works. And like, if you understand, like, it's like, I get it right to a degree, but like, there's people like him and other guys that like, really fucking understand it, right? Like I do this for fun. That's their job. 
And those guys, right, they're the ones that you need to listen to. And they're the ones that aren't being listened to with these systems. And that's why they happen. Yeah, they play the game. They understand it really well. And it's like, yeah, they make yeah, they make decisions based off of numbers. And you can't do that, really. And when's the last time Ian sat on a famed achievement? Uh, farmed achievement points for 32 hours? Uh, probably never did that, I would assume. And I uh, worked 40, uh, 45 hours a week. There's better games to play. If WoW wants to force me into min-max, then fuck it. Well, the thing is, is like you should want to min-max in the game. Like, in my opinion, I think that video games should make you want to achieve that next level. They should make you want to become a better version of yourself. You should want to become like a phoenix reborn from the ashes of your terrible real life. And you're now this amazing warrior in this game and you want to be powerful and, you know, do a lot of damage and fucking pop off, right? But the fact is, man, the fact fucking is that if you don't motivate people and you don't get people to want to do that, like for a great example of this, a good game that really motivated people is classic World of Warcraft. Classic WoW, especially like vanilla WoW and like Burning Crusade. If you saw somebody with the War Glaives, if you saw somebody with Thunder Fury, you knew, well, now you know they're, they're the guild master. They're an officer in the guild. Right? This, wow, this guy's got War Glaives. He must be an officer. Oh, all right. How about that? You know, but uh, back then, back then they were officers too, but like we didn't feel that way about it, right? We didn't see that. All we saw is like some dude that actually had this like really cool item that nobody else fucking had. And that's what it really comes down to. And like whenever you go and you see like in Final Fantasy, you see somebody with the fucking, uh, the T weapon, right? You see somebody with the Paradactyl. You see someone with the Tiger. You know, these items are really fucking cool. And you see somebody with, like, the uh, uh, fucking Pandemonium Savage the mount. The, I think it's like, a three-headed mount. It's, like, a King Ghidorah almost, but it's, like, metallic. It's so fucking cool. And that's the kind of stuff. Yeah, Big Bird? Yeah, it's Big Bird. That's the kind of shit. Necromancer? Yeah, stuff like that. And you need to have those things in the game for people to want to work towards. But at the same time, achieving those things has to be fun. And that's something that, like, Necromancer is, like, it's fun in a way, but it's kind of, like, fun in a way that, like, Russian Roulette is fun. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, <laughs> you, you know, what's going to happen now? But overall, I feel like a lot of the uh, the systems, and you have these things that people aspire to. It's like in, uh, in Apex Legends, right? Like, whenever the game first came out, everybody, as soon as they got their first 20 kill game, w would have the thing of, like, all the skulls, right? For, like, their flag. And then on top of that, in PUBG, remember the fucking bandana that people would have? It's worth like 10 grand or some kind of bullshit. Like, I'm, I think Summit has it and like a few other guys have it too. I never got it, but like a lot of other people do. And that's the kind of stuff that you need to have in those games to uh, inspire people to, uh, to play more. And I think that also a really good game with this is actually Final Fantasy and Lost Ark. The reason why they're so good, and I actually think Lost Ark is better at this than Final Fantasy is. And the reason why I think Lost Ark is better is that Whenever you see some of the end game, like I'm not talking about end game, but I'm talking about end game, fucking fights in Lost Ark, they are so intense, so fucking insane, so over the top that you want to get there just to, because if you beat that fight, it's like to a certain degree, I have fucking, I have overcome adversity, I have defeated the demons, and now I'm in the pits of hell fighting against Diablo himself. And it feels fucking cool. And those are the things that, like, you lose whenever you have, like, really easy difficulties. You do. You lose these things. And Lost Ark has them. And I think that's one thing that people don't really realize. You'll be amazed today by the Palace Dungeon and Palace Abyssal. And it's the same thing in, in, a, in a, a fucking in an extended way to ultimates in uh, in final fantasy because if you see somebody doing alexander ultimate or you see the golden bahamut right i know that's like i think it's 50 percent or something like that uh after like the transition like if you see that it's fucking insane and just watching it happen is so cool it's the same with like alexander etc and that's the kind of stuff that i like to see and world of warcraft used to have this too like i remember Everybody came over and they were asking me, So, so Zay, what was it like whenever you got to the Frozen Throne? 
Mike, what was it like? And I'm like, oh, I'll show you, right? And I took screenshots and I'm like, yeah, so this is me. That's the Lich King right there. And we we're going to beat his ass, right? And it was so cool. Lost Ark numbers? Sure. I actually looked at it earlier today. Lost Ark has... And I'll, I'm, I don't want to go through... I've literally looked at one post on Reddit and we're about an hour into the stream. I apologize. We're going to go through a few more of these too in a minute. We have over one mil. Over one million players still on. And you know why? It's very simple. It's because the end game has levels. Most MMOs nowadays, the biggest problem they have is a shitty end game. And the Lost Ark end game has a lot of shitty elements to it. But you go from point A to point B. And that is so much more fulfilling than going from lowercase a to uppercase a. And that is the reason why people are playing through the game and being retained is because they see the progression their characters can make. They see the way that they can advance and grow their characters. That is what gets people involved. How do you know this? Because I've spent 15 years playing these games. I've watched them go up and go down. And this is my best insight. I don't ever know anything. It's all just an assumption. But guess what? I'm assuming I'm right. I think that I'm fucking right. So we'll see what's going to happen. I mean, obviously it depends, but I feel like in many regards, uppercase A, lowercase A, what I mean by uppercase A versus lowercase A is doing it on normal mode versus hard mode. And like, you know, like normal mode is lowercase, uppercase is a uh, uh, hard mode. You see what I'm saying? And like you go and you fight one boss and another boss, and it feels like you're actually making visual progression. Like visual progression in games really matters a lot.